Hey, good morning to you. Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. So it is 1225 Pacific Time that I'm recording this, so it's about 325 Eastern Time. But I'm not going to publish it until later so that you don't get alerts. And you're like, oh no, the Hurricane Track guy sent us something out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Must be an emergency. So this will be published later around 8 a.m. Eastern Time when you finally see this. And it'll still be relevant. And what I'm going to do is go over the latest on Hannah, which is probably going to be a hurricane, and Douglas, which might make landfall as a hurricane in Hawaii. That is a very rare thing. Unbelievable what's going on. We'll also take a look at Gonzalo and Invest Area 92L off the coast of Africa. Uh, all kinds of things going on. First of all, I am in Arizona. I am not in Texas. I'll explain more about that. I know a lot of people are bewildered. Why wouldn't he be there? Well, I'll explain in just a moment. First, let's take a look at Douglas. We still have about a day before we really start to have to deal with this in terms of what impacts to expect. Maybe we get lucky and the trajectory will be more on the north side of the cone of uncertainty and most of the impacts can stay away. Otherwise, uh, if it avoids coming right over the big island or close, this could come in as a hurricane, and as such, uh, hurricane watches are in effect, or a hurricane watch for several islands is in effect. The watch is in effect, and this is really interesting to see, um, and it's still a little too soon to know about, you know, for sure about the impacts. So let's give this about another day or so. I'll address this tomorrow afternoon or evening, and we'll know a lot more by then. It'll be closer, uh, probably around here somewhere. And we'll get an idea of, on it, uh, of its trajectory that maybe we can get lucky. It'll go on this north side instead of right down the middle here. Uh, possibly, like, for example, very close to Oahu and Honolulu and Waikiki Beach and Maui. Wow, very, very rare to see this. But let's give it another day, like I said, and see what happens. All right, so more pressing in the immediate future here is Hannah. Kind of a weird-looking system um very i don't know it's it's hard to explain a very good outflow overall but there's just not much in the way of spiral banding it's more like kind of a very large well organized cluster of rotating you know it's just not classic right am i i'm not seeing things it's i know it's been a long day for me to get over to arizona but that just doesn't look like what we're used to seeing um, but nevertheless, it is intensifying pressure down to 991 millibars as of the moment that I'm putting this video discussion together. Uh, the effects, though, that's what we need to focus on. Uh, this is going to come in. Corpus Christi is right in here, okay? And then south of there um, is, oh, I've already forgotten the name of this, this bay down here. Uh, Aransas Bay or Baffin Bay, something like that, right, I think. And then down here is Padre Island, Port Isabel, South Padre Island, etc. Brownsville tucked in farther inland over here. And I think what's going to happen is this is going to come in and kind of dig south at the last few hours and really miss these larger population centers up to the north with a majority of the impacts. And this is a big reason why I'm not in Texas. Okay, first of all, if I was going to go, I would have taken my vehicle. I have a Ford F-150 that I'm renting for one year, and it's a long story. I've got a great deal with Thrifty and the whole economic thing that we're going through with the pandemic. I was able to get a good rental uh, for one year, and so I've got a Ford F-150, and I would have had to have left. I would have left Thursday, yesterday morning, well, now two days ago, and I would not have gotten to Corpus Christi until Friday night. So, and then I would have had to set up all the cameras and I wouldn't have been able to sleep. And that is very, very dangerous. You know, just driving all that way. Um, I, I just, I can't do that. Okay. I just, it's not feasible. And when you get that tired, you make yourself susceptible to mistakes. And this is going to make landfall during the day. So I had to have stayed up all day during the day Saturday. And it's just not good. And it all worked out because it is going to make landfall in this area right through here 
south of Corpus Christi, and Corpus Christi is really my cutoff for taking equipment and setting it up for these systems, unless we're real sure something's going to impact the lower Rio Grande Valley directly, you know, maybe a hurricane coming across and making landfall like that, I just typically don't go south of Corpus Christi because there's not that much down here overall. Here, that's not to say there's no people, and it's not to say that it doesn't matter, but what am I going to do? You've got that, I think it's Highway 77 that comes down here, uh, Kingsville and Raymondville or whatever it is. No, you know, that's just, there's not much that I can contribute. And to drive all that way from North Carolina to get over there would have been extremely difficult, and it would have definitely been harmful to my health, honestly. And I just have to be very careful with that. Uh, and like I said, it kind of worked out. And one more thing about it. By the time we knew this was going to be a threat, it was already too late for me to have left. Remember, the guidance and the forecast from the Hurricane Center was not saying this would be a hurricane until today. And I certainly couldn't have left today. Even if I flew to Houston, I wouldn't be able to take that much equipment at all, and I wouldn't be able to serve much of a purpose. So why even worry about it? And it's going into a sparsely populated area, as I've mentioned several times already, south of Corpus. So I kind of got off lucky here, um, and this worked in my favor. And it won't impact a big population area. That's the good news here. Houston completely spared for the, well, there's a few bands up here. And there's been some water rises along the northwest gulf because this large wind machine is out there. But other than that, most of the impacts here, the worst impacts, are going to be down along uh, the South Texas coast. So let's look real quick at the hazards affecting land. And when you see this video, again, it's going to be around 8 a.m. Eastern time and points after that people tune in. These are the hazards affecting land. This isn't going to change much throughout the day on Saturday. Storm surge has increased a little bit, 3 to 5 feet. Corpus Christi Bay, Capano Bay, Aransas Bay, uh, San Antonio Bay, Matagorda, etc., um, so basically anywhere from one to three, three to five, life-threatening, you got to be careful, okay? Um, and then even all the way down, or I'm sorry, up to Galveston Bay, one to two feet, again, because that big wind machine is sitting out there. Uh, the deepest water, of course, this is above ground level that they're talking about. Storm surge, this is above ground level, and that's what it says, above ground. That's the, so three to five feet above ground. And it's not going to be everywhere that gets this surge. Uh, it's all dependent on the angle of attack, the wind field. This is what the general guidance is suggesting, so please take that seriously. Be careful if you have a small craft. I know it's the weekend. A lot of people are going to be quite upset that this is coming in over the weekend, but what can you do? you got to use common sense or you could lose your life. All right, seriously. Rainfall, anywhere from 5 to 10 inches. I was thinking it would be near 10 inches. I mentioned that yesterday. And that's what we're thinking here, or they're thinking at the Hurricane Center and the Weather Prediction Center. So heavy rainfall, that could cause some minor to moderate river flooding in South Texas. Please keep that in mind. And then the surfers, yes, there are surfers in Texas. You might like this with the increase in surf. Just be careful out there. And then you definitely need to have National Weather Service uh, watches and warnings, especially the warnings easy to get to and coming to you on your mobile device or a NOAA weather radio because tornadoes here, you could have some brief tornadoes, especially in any of the bands. But you know what? Looking at this fantastic radar loop from Mark Nissenbaum here out of Florida State University, he's put this together. This is the Corpus Christi site. There's Corpus Christi. Let's highlight it for you. In white, right there, there's the radar site. Not a lot of the typical spiral bands. is kind of dry on the northwest side, a very large uh, center here, the eye, if you will, uh, heavier banding on the east side. I do suspect that this will tighten up. It still has time. But watch for any of these feeder bands and any of these little cells, like that one there, just as an example. It's usually these cells that are by themselves, that rotate on shore, that can produce the tornadoes. And you're going to have very little warning. So just be mindful of that and ready to take action if you need to. And again, this is going to kind of rotate on in wobble along, make landfall down here, generally in this area where there's more cows than there are people. Kennedy County right in here, I believe that's what it is. 
That's where Brett made landfall in 1999 from a different direction. There's just not a lot down there, and that is the good news. Um, once you get south of Corpus, there's just not that much population, and so at least we won't have to worry about a, a significant amount of damage if this were to ramp up more than forecast, let's say, which it could happen. You never know. I mean, look how bad, and just real quick, the GFS blew it early on, and the European was really on to something when I saw that. Wednesday and Thursday, I could have followed my gut and said, oh, as soon as I saw that Euro jump in my truck and go, I still would have gotten to Corpus Christi Friday night and been exhausted. We've already been over that. But the Euro did a really good job overall. The GFS, pretty terrible. I don't know why. That's not my job. But just something to point out, the European did very well with this. All right, we also have Gonzalo. Well, for a little while longer anyway. Um... <laughs> kind of an amorphous blob of clouds. There is some rotation with the tropical wave that's in here. It's going to open up and be a very sharp uh, wind shift and tropical wave, not much in the way of westerly wind over here. But that doesn't matter anymore. The wind won't be the issue. But all this moisture headed in to Trinidad and Tobago and the southern Windward Islands here south of uh, Barbados, you're going to get a lot of heavy rain. And that can cause flash flooding. So if you're down there, and I know I have a lot of people that watch this on YouTube, down in Trinidad, Tobago, and even this northeast corner of South America, believe it or not, you know, you're going to have some effects from this as this barrels along. The models didn't do a good job with this either. Neither the Euro nor the GFS. The GFS was too aggressive. Neither model kept it this far to the south. Wow. So you folks here... Trinidad, Tobago especially, and then some of the southern islands of the windwards. Heavy rain already moving in now. More will come in through the day on Saturday. Real quick, a look at the forecast here from the Euro. Might as well just pay attention to this. This is the 850 millibar level, and I talk about it all the time. That round appearance to the vorticity signature in the modeling, that's what we look for. And there it is. This is the initial condition. This only is every 24 hours, so by Saturday night, there it is over South Texas there, probably Kennedy County. And just so you know, Corpus Christi is right there. So the worst of it, nice and far to the south of Corpus. Yes, there'll be rain bands and some heavy squalls, a rise in the water. We already went over that. Capano Bay, etc. Yes, there could be some storm surge, but the worst of it, is going to be south of there, probably over Kennedy County, along the, uh, the Highway 77 corridor, which is north-south. That goes down into Harlingen and eventually leads into Brownsville and out to Port Isabel. So between Corpus and South Padre Island proper, that's where this looks like it's going to come in. And then it's interesting because it dips southwest into northern Mexico. Kind of unusual to do that. Just kind of back it up and see how it does that. Interesting. Strong high pressure in control, kind of driving this. That's not the way I wanted it. Driving it to the south like that. Um, and at least it'll be quick. It won't hang around and cause a big flood concern. And to wrap things up here, finally, the broad picture from the Euro here, uh, outlining what's what west coast of Africa, eastern North America over here. There is Hannah. Here's the leftovers of Gonzalo. And here's 92L. A lot of fanfare about this, a lot of talk, a lot of chatter. So what happens? Well, 24 hours out, 48, 72, 96, 120. By day five, maybe another system here coming through the islands, maybe further north, farther north, whatever, south of this big old high pressure area. More energy, more energy. We know what's coming. We have plenty of time. This just gets you aware something's in the pipeline we might have to deal with it in the islands in about five days time all right so again real quick i'm out in arizona why am i here the monsoon is something that i'm very interested in so i came out here i'd already had this planned anyway and so hannah came along and it certainly rattled me but i can honestly say there's not much i can do in texas as it is so it's not that big of a deal that i'm going to miss it trust me and there's going to be a lot more coming, and I can serve you better 
by just producing these updates here and posting stuff on Twitter and social media. And, um, of course, at the end of the day, National Weather Service, National Hurricane Center, your local media are going to give you the best local information as it is anyway. All right, so I'm in Arizona until Monday. I've got some phenomenal stuff to share. I'm going to wait until I get back. I'll start compiling it. You aren't going to believe some of the things that I captured. The desert monsoon is incredible, and I can't wait to share it with you. And I thank very much our support from our patrons on Patreon. I'm mostly known for hurricanes. I get that. But I've been wanting to branch out. I've been covering winter storms. I like the desert monsoon, other big impact weather events to immerse people in it, to keep them aware of it, to share the beauty of it. And that's why I'm in Arizona. And I appreciate it from our supporters, our patrons, that are helping to make it possible. All right, so enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I will be sleeping while you're watching this. And then it's another busy day in the desert southwest, as I, too, will be watching what happens with Hannah very anxiously. And then we'll see what's going on with Douglas. I'll talk more about that Saturday evening. Hey, as always, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time and attention. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again later on Saturday evening.